Hello, and welcome to today's webcast, being brought to you by the Center on Knowledge Translation for Disability and Rehabilitation Research at SEDL through funding from the National Institute on Disability and Rehabilitation Research in the U.S. Department of Education. This is John Westbrook, Director of the Center and also Co-Chair of the Knowledge Translation and Implementation Coordinating Group of the Campbell Collaboration. We are delighted to bring today's webcast to you featuring the work and resources of the Methods Coordinating Group of the Campbell Collaboration, or C2, as it's often referred to. I know you will find it very useful, and I think, thank this group very much for planning such an informative webcast for us. Okay, so without further ado, I will turn it over to Dr. Ariel Alloway, co-chair of the C2 Methods Group. Ariel? Hello. It's a pleasure to introduce our editorial board, which includes Terry Piggott, Emily Tanner-Smith, and Josh Polanin. Terry and Emily are our editors, and Josh is our managing editor. Today, they are going to speak about the methodological expectations for Campbell intervention reviews. Let's hear from them now. So, this is Terry Piggott. What is the Campbell Collaboration Methods Coordinating Group? Who's involved? Well, here we have a bunch of pictures of people that are involved in our methods, um, our Campbell Methods Group. We have two co-chairs. We have an editorial team consisting of a managing editor and two co-editors. Uh, we have a number of chairs of our subgroups, which I will talk about in a minute. And we also have an advisory board. So what does the methodological group of Campbell do? We support the production of Campbell systematic reviews. We provide methods, peer reviewing, and editing for all protocols and reviews that come through the Campbell collaboration. We also are all involved in research to improve the methodology of research synthesis and meta-analysis. And we are also um, involved in disseminating guidelines for state-of-the-art review methods. We have several subgroups, as I mentioned earlier, that provide advice and guidance on specific methodological topics. These subgroups include one on economics, one on equity, specifically equity methods um, to encourage review authors to discuss the impact of interventions on, equality of, on um, reducing inequality of opportunity. We also have a group involved in information retrieval, how to find studies for a systematic review. We have a group entitled process implementation looking at how to include methods about the implementation um, of an intervention into a Campbell review. We have a methods group on statistical methods. And we also have a subgroup that provides training in statistical methods for meta-analysis and also for other aspects of a systematic review from information retrieval through um, data analysis. So. What, do we, what kinds of things can we provide you with? Um, the methods group provides um, consultation on these specific review methods, as I mentioned before, information retrieval, what kinds of studies, how to find studies for your review, study coding, how to extract information from studies, the assessment of research quality of the studies that are included in a review, how to calculate effect sizes for a systematic review, and then, again, how to analyze those um, and how to synthesize them across studies. We also provide consultation on the kinds of research designs that would be appropriate for your question in a Campbell review, methods on how to um, incorporate economic um, information in a review, and also methods on process implementation and data. We also maintain a resource center as part of our, um, our purview as, as the methods group. Uh, for example, we have tools there to help you complete a, a systematic review, such as the effect size calculator. 
Um, we also provide review guidelines. We um, produce a number of policy documents on specific issues that you might run into in a systematic review. We also have useful links in our resource center to um, other resources that are useful in thinking about um, completing a systematic review, such as the Equator Network. Um, and we also provide um, methods, um, policy briefs, again, on specific issues that you might run into in a systematic review. Um, we also plan to update our resource center by March 2015 so that it becomes more useful for everyone who is interested in completing a systematic review. And I'm now going to turn it, uh, um, turn it to uh, Emily Tanner-Smith to talk about our methodological expectations. Thank you, Terry. So I'd like to take this opportunity to now discuss briefly some recent documents that we've published on the Campbell Collaboration website outlining some methodological expectations for Campbell Collaboration intervention reviews. And we'll call these the MESS two-year guidelines for the conduct and reporting of intervention reviews. So really, our MESS two-year guidelines were adapted from the Cochrane Collaboration's messier standards for the expectations for the Cochrane Collaboration intervention reviews. And so Cochrane's messier standards really were designed to provide clear and transparent standards for both the conduct and the reporting of systematic review protocols as well as completed manuscripts. And so the goal of the Cochrane messier standards really is to provide a resource for both authors and editors to make it clear what expectations are expected of them um, for the publishing of their protocols and systematic reviews. And so really the goal of these expectations is to help make the uh, publishing experience clear for authors and also help streamline the editorial process. So these methodological expectation guidelines really help to streamline the communications between editorial teams, author review teams, as well as the methodologists who are going to be reviewing the methods and the statistical analyses in the protocols and completed systematic reviews. So at the Campbell Collaboration, we decided to adapt Cochrane's Messier standards um, to the MESS two-year standards to essentially take those existing standards and make some adaptations to account for the different methods that are often, um, that often will occur in Campbell Collaboration systematic reviews. Um, so essentially what we did here is, again, we wanted to have clear and transparent methods for our review teams and our author teams um, to make it clear to them when their protocols and reviews come to the methods group for peer review that they know what uh, standards they will be evaluated on for their research. And so again, the goal is to ensure consistency and transparency in the peer review process. So for the process for developing these standards, we created a working group uh, to work on the adaptation of the Cochrane Messier standards. And so we included representatives from all of the Campbell Collaboration coordinating groups, and they're listed on this slide. And I want to take a minute just to thank all of the participants in this working group who really worked tirelessly, participated on many calls to reach consensus on all of the adaptations that we ultimately made on the MESS two-year guidelines. And then finally, once the working group had reached consensus on the adaptations, uh, that proposal for those MESS two-year guidelines were distributed to the co-chairs of the methods coordinating group and then finally approved um, by the Campbell Collaboration Steering Group. So some of you may be wondering what the primary differences are between the MESS year and the MESS two-year um, guidelines. And I think it's important to first highlight that really there are many similarities between the two um, documents with the messier documents and the mess two-year documents because really the methodological expectations for Campbell collaboration reviews are highly similar to those for Cochrane collaboration reviews. So the few minor differences that you will see really do focus around kind of three key issues. So first are issues of risk of bias assessments as well as assessments of the methodological quality of the primary studies included in the protocols and reviews. 
And essentially, uh, the adaptations that we made here permit for a plurality of methods for assessing risk of bias and methodological quality, given the types of research studies that may be more common in Campbell collaboration systematic reviews. And then finally, you'll notice some adaptations around the development and reporting of summary of findings tables. Again, recognizing that many Campbell collaboration reviews may include tens if not hundreds of studies. And so we have to account and add some additional um, flexibility there in reporting standards. And then finally, the remainder of the changes between the MESS year and the MESS two year documents really are quite minor in terms of changing each of the individual items in the conduct and reporting standards from perhaps mandatory to highly desirable or vice versa. But overall, the standards are very similar, and so we only made slight modifications to allow for the wide range of methods that we see in Campbell Collaboration systematic reviews. So I will now hand it over to Josh Polanin, who can talk about how the MESS two-year standards will be developed and incorporated into the editorial process. Thank you, Emily. I'm happy to be on the call. As Emily mentioned, my name is Josh Plannon, and I'm the managing editor of the Methods Group. And I'm going to talk briefly uh, today about uh, our expectations for Campbell editors and uh, relatedly what we expect uh, from our authors as well. <clears throat> so as we look at the MESS two-year expectations, uh, one of the most important points to mention to begin with is that um, the standards have been adopted um, as of October 1st, and all reviews moving forward and protocols must comply uh, with the reporting standards. Um, and these need to be completed uh, uh, for all protocols that have not been accepted yet and all reviews in publication. So if uh, a team is working on a review currently, um, and the protocol has been accepted, but the review has not as of October 1st, 2014, uh, the review team needs to take uh, the time to go through the MESS two-year standards and expectations and make sure that the review complies with these expectations. Now, uh, incorporating these expectations into the review uh, should be a fairly straightforward process. Um, if you look at the expectations uh, downloaded from the website, uh, you will see that they are listed uh, fairly succinctly uh, so that a review team can incorporate them. Um, now, these are very helpful because they help to align uh, the Campbell community uh, across the coordinating groups. Uh, oftentimes, we'll find that uh, substantive um, backgrounds talk in a slightly different language um, even for similar aspects of the review process. And these expectations help to align all of us so that we're all talking in a common language. Um, and this will also help not only across the groups, but also within the coordinating groups uh, between the editor and the authors. Um, if the editor uh, and the authors uh, communicate succinctly, uh, the process will move much more smoothly. Um, and uh, the editors may turn to the MESS two-year guidelines and expectations um, and recommend some of the um, uh, uh, some changes in the reviews to the uh, review team. Um, the goal of the uh, of the guidelines and expectations are really to set forth a transparent set of expectations and guidelines for the review team, as Emily said. Um, in practice, we think that this uh, really should help uh, review teams um, know from the onset what they're getting involved in. Um, and so we think that while the protocol in the review is being written, a review team can read and incorporate these expectations um, into the protocol. Uh, we'd also suggest that once the protocol and review has been written, um, a member of the review team uh, use the MESS two-year guidelines and expectations and use it as a sort of checklist and go back to their uh, written documents and make sure that everything that's included in the MESS two-year guidelines is also included in the protocol and review. Um, this will help the, uh, both the editorial process and the methodological reviews 
um, as we'll be following a similar practice in the uh, editor in the methods group. Um, and therefore, doing this at the onset will really help to speed the process and make sure that we're all on the same page. And so now I think we'll turn it over to Sean, who will lead us through a bit of a Q&A. Thank you very much, Josh. My name is Sean Grant, and I'm a coordinator for the Campbell webcast series. And after these three great presentations, what I would like to do is make the session a bit interactive at the end. And we have a few questions for all of our presenters about the standards and expectations they presented in this webcast today. So my first question will be for Terry. And I was wondering if Terry could let us know, um, what is the advantage of having a methods group for the Campbell Collaboration? Thanks, Sean. The key advantage of having a methods group for Campbell is that it ensures quality and consistency of reviews across the Campbell Collaboration. It is also a central place where we um, can provide expertise on the methodology of the conduct and reporting of a review. And we can also promote new methods for systematic reviews. Perfect. Thank you, Terry. The second question I would like to address to Josh. Josh, I was wondering if you could let us know how one can get involved in the Campbell Methods Group if they're interested in being involved. Yes, thanks, Sean. Great question. Um, there are a couple ways uh, that you can actually get involved with the Methods Group. Um, the first is you can email myself or uh, one of the other members and request to be added as a member or an affiliate. Um, a member of the Methods Group um, has full voting rights in all of our upcoming elections. Um, and is often uh, called upon um, in different situations uh, as a reviewer or to be part of different subgroups. Um, an affiliate is uh, still in aligned with the methods group, uh, but really only receives um, different news bulletins or um, different updates about what is going on. You can also request uh, to be your peer reviewer. Um, during the editorial process, uh, we ask um, for external method peer reviews um, on both our protocols and our completed reviews. Um, you can send a request to me or to one of the other members of the methods group, and we'll add you to our list of um, methodological experts uh, as a peer reviewer. Uh, finally, there's a couple other smaller ways that you can be involved. Um, you uh, can join a subgroup. Uh, we, as Terry mentioned at the top of this podcast, uh, there are a number of different subgroups uh, that we have affiliated with the methods group, and we're always looking for new members. Um, you can also help us uh, write uh, or help uh, write a new series of methods white papers um, on different policy aspects that we'll be writing in the upcoming months. And finally, if you just like to hear about the news uh, and information coming out of the methods group, um, you can request to join the methods listserv, um, and where you will receive our um, biannual uh, newsletter. Um, and this way you can keep up on everything that's happening in the methods group. Thanks, Josh. That's perfect. And we really hope that those listening to this webcast do take the opportunity to get involved. Uh, the next question I have is for Emily. And I was wondering if you could explain to us why Campbell decided to adapt the MEF here guidelines from Cochrane and um, why we didn't create our own from scratch. If you could address that, that'd be great. Thanks, Sean. Um, yes, when the working group decided to begin adapting the Messier, the Cochrane Messier guidelines, essentially our ultimate goal was to highlight the fact that the Cochrane Collaboration and the Campbell Collaboration are sister organizations, and both organizations are dedicated to promoting and disseminating high-quality systematic reviews and meta-analyses. And so really, we share many methodological expectations for both the conduct and reporting of intervention reviews. And given that, um, and as I mentioned earlier in the webcast, really our methods overlap substantially. 
And so we felt in the working group that it was much more realistic and um, it made more sense to adapt the messier guidelines because, again, the majority of those guidelines are going to be perfectly aligned with both the Cochrane expectations and the Campbell expectations. And so we felt it would also send to authors an important message that, again, we share common goals and methodological expectations. And indeed, that's why we have many review teams who seek to co-register their review products with both Cochrane and the Campbell collaboration. Um, so because of that, and also there's no need to reinvent the wheel, as they say, um, we wanted to adapt um, those guidelines that had already been developed in an extensive amount of work have been developed um, and put into that by the Cochrane Collaboration um, folks. And so we're really indebted to them for putting in all of that legwork at the beginning. And so really that's why we decided it made more sense for us just to tweak those messier guidelines to make those slight modifications um, to change those expectations so that they would apply to all of the Campbell Collaboration uh, reviews that we have in our library. Thanks, Emily. That's really great to know about the uh, beneficial relationship that we have with Cochrane and the efficient use of resources within Campbell. The next question going back around the horn is to Josh. And I think as managing editor of the Methods Group, you could best address these questions I'm sure we'd get from some authors, which are, why should I use these new expectations? And won't it add more time to the review process and the time it takes for my review to be published and disseminated? Yeah, I think this is a, a very important question, John. Um, I'll address the first one. Uh, why should I use the MESS two-year guidelines? And um, I think uh, the main uh, thing that these expectations set forth is, is in the title. They're expectations that we have as a methods group and Campbell-wide uh, for what the review teams should be putting forth in their reviews. Um, and in the past, um, We've relied on review team expertise or um, a few of our policy documents to help guide uh, the review teams. Um, but these um, expectations um, are listed in such a way that um, they can be read and applied in a much more straightforward manner. Um, so picking them up and downloading this document will really help with some of the more technical uh, big and small aspects. Of a, of a review process. Um, and so that segues into the second question nicely. Um, uh, I think that at the onset, um, while the expectations might look somewhat overwhelming to begin with, uh, we do think that this uh, will have a significant impact on the amount of time um, in the review process. And that is because uh, review teams will know uh, what uh, should be written in the protocols and the complete, completed reviews, and what the methods group will be looking for. Um, there are some great examples um, listed in the expectations, um, and we think that they're written in such a way that um, with just a little bit more work up front, um, the review process in the end will be significantly uh, decreased uh, because there won't be a back and forth between the methods group or the editorial team and, and the authors. Thanks, Josh. That's certainly my experience with uh, expectations and guidelines like this. It really helps to ensure the rigor of the end product and can even sometimes make the process more efficient because the standards are clear. So it's very helpful to know. The next question is going around the horn back to Terry. Uh, say I am not familiar with one of the items in the new expectations. Whom should I contact with any questions I may have? Thanks, Sean. Well, your first point of contact should be someone on the editorial team, either the managing editor, Josh Plannon, or one of the co-editors, Emily Tanner-Smith, or myself, Terry Piggott. Um, and if we feel we uh, need to get some, um, some other more uh, deeper expertise on some particular issue, we can certainly uh, send you to someone else we think that um, could, could help you out with figuring out how to uh, address that particular expectation. Great, yes, we certainly have a rich team with the methods groups. So there are many points of contact. If you go to their website, you should be able to find contact info for all the people that Terry just mentioned. I'm sure someone would be more than happy to help you out if you have any questions about Met2Ear. And the final question of the webinar, 
the softball question to Emily, as the answer is on the slide, where can I find these new guidelines? All right, my favorite kind of question. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Um, yes, definitely check out uh, the website on the Campbell Collaboration website. We have the Messier Guidelines documents, and so there you can find the two documents. Um, one, which is uh, outlines the expectations for the conduct of Campbell Collaboration Intervention Reviews, and the second, which will outline the expectations for the reporting of Campbell Collaboration Intervention Reviews. So we encourage all of our author teams and anyone interested in systematic reviewing or meta-analysis to download those documents and check them out today. Great. Thanks, Emily. That's very helpful. And thanks to all of our participants in today's webcast. Building off what Emily just said, we'd love for you to get in touch, not just about the new guidelines, but anything related to the collaboration in general. You'll see there is a link there for letting us know, giving us some feedback on how this webcast was. If you'd like to get in touch about Campbell in general, there is our contact email address. And of course, you can visit our website or follow us on Twitter and Facebook for updates on what's going on in the collaboration. We thank you for joining us for this webcast today, and we look forward to seeing you for the next one.